nuts. We'll stomp them in the nuts. We'll stomp them in the nuts. I'ma stomp them in the nuts. We'll stomp them in the nuts. We'll stomp them in the nuts. We'll stomp them in the nuts. I'ma stomp them in the nuts. Stamp, previously known as Stomp in Dark Souls 3, is a heavy ash of war that is attunable to colossal swords, great swords, curved great swords, heavy thrusting swords, hammers, great hammers, axes, great axes, flails, and colossal weapons. Stamp comes in two flavors, sweep and upward cut. Rest in peace, Stamp Overhead Slam. Gone but not forgotten. Maybe in DLC. These two ashes are very similar in function, but their follow-up attack will dictate how and why you use it in battle. Today, I'm only going to be talking about the Stamp siblings in PvP and not PvE. For the sake of the video, we're going to pretend that Stamp Sweep from before patch 1.07 never existed, as I don't want to be associated with that travesty. As an Ash of War, Stamp Sweep is among the worst ashes in Elden Ring. Slow startup, not a lot of range, relatively low hyper armor values, highly telegraphed attack animations, and obnoxiously large amounts of end lag make for, yep, one of the worst ashes of war in the game. You'll want to avoid using stamp on anything that isn't a colossal weapon or sword, as the hyper armor values for the follow up attack decrease significantly when using a slightly smaller weapon like a greatsword or a curved greatsword. The further down the line of weapon length you go, the more unusable Stamp Sweep becomes. The whole purpose of this move is to trade with an attack and counter with your own. 90% of the time you'll end up tanking a hit and missing your follow-up attack because the follow-up is too slow and the hyper armor, the very thing that enables you to withstand and trade with attacks, the very design and purpose of Stamp, is dysfunctional. It doesn't follow its own fundamental rules. That is the core issue with Stamp. I should also mention that if your opponent has 91 poise, they will be able to passive poise through the first hit of Stamp Sweep, the determining strike that dictates if the important part of the attack lands or not, can be passive poise with just 91 poise. Thank you, Bamco. <laughs> The follow-up of Stamp Sweep is comprised of two sequential attacks. This is highly beneficial for weapons that utilize status effects. When using... Bleed, Frost, and Poison have potential to be procced in one Stamp Sweep if you land both hits using a dedicated RL-125 build. This has great synergy with Lord of Blood's Exaltation and Kindred of Rot's Exaltation. Landing both hits of Stamp Sweep using a Colossal Weapon will trigger all successive attack conditions that any item in the game may have. This includes items such as Godskin Swaddling Cloth and the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. Landing both hits of Stamp Sweep isn't easy, but at least with the right build, you can make it rewarding when you finally do land it. I know I said we would pretend that previous versions of Stamp Sweep didn't exist, but it's certainly worth noting that the second hit of Stamp Sweep will now cause a hard knockdown, giving you more time to recover from its incredibly high end lag once successfully landed. This was not always the case. This means that the second hit of Stamp Sweep is now unable to be poised through, as it does the max amount of poise damage an attack can do. Being the lesser brother of the stamps, Upward Cut suffers from virtually everything bad about Sweep. To reiterate, slow follow-up, obnoxious amounts of end lag, easily interruptible, the whole nine yards. The worst thing about Upward Cut is that it doesn't benefit from the instant status effect procs or the instant successive attack procs that come with having a two-hit follow-up. Sucks to suck. Upward Cut is exactly what it's described as. The perks of a vertical strike in Elden Ring is not being able to counter it with a jump attack, which 
people love doing, by the way. Speaking from experience, I've had opponents duck under Stamp Sweep and jump over it, unscathed. With Upward Cut, there's no ducking or jumping over it. If you can catch your opponent in end lag at the right range, they'll be forced to dodge. In a previous video, I gave an in-depth explanation of Super Armor and how it differs from Hyper Armor in Elden Ring. To save you some time, Super Armor in Elden Ring is unconditional Hyper Armor. Hyper Armor that cannot be interrupted by an attack that doesn't force an animation, like a grab or a backstab attack. Poise is not factored into whether you can withstand an attack or not. Super Armor will always allow you to withstand an attack regardless of poise damage or poise health. <laughs> that was awesome. Stamp is comprised of two animations. The animation that plays when you press your Ash of War button and the animation that plays when you press your heavy attack directly after your Ash of War input. Pressing the Ash of War button will grant your character super armor and increased absorption values for a brief moment. You cannot be poise broken during this animation. The second animation will replace your super armor with hyper armor and take away your increased absorption values the frame of your heavy input. During this animation you can be poise broken. Let's talk more about the first animation. During your first animation, in addition to your heavy attack input, you can also follow up with a light attack input and a consumable input. Light attack on colossal swords and weapons is pretty slow, but it can sometimes throw your opponent off if they're not expecting it. Not many people know about this little trick, but by exploiting our character's unbending willpower and tenacity, we can withstand an attack our opponent throws at us and punish with a point-blank fan daggers. Most people will be waiting and reacting to our dreadfully slow follow-up options. Fan daggers, on the contrary, comes out incredibly fast and can sometimes catch people off guard if they're not looking for it. Never do this if you're in a health deficit. This option should only be used to close out a game. Sometimes you can coax them into attacking you only for their attack to be super armored through and punished with a point blank fan dagger. If you're lucky, sometimes this will happen. I found a lot of success with this mix up. Hopefully, you will too. Another thing I should mention you can backstep into Stamp much faster than any other defensive option. Not all Ashes of War can do this, but Stamp is of the privileged few that can. The erratic movement you can dish out with this technique is a good way to bait your opponent into thinking it's a good time to attack. Backstepping towards your opponent and cycling through Stamp and Backstep can throw your opponent's timing off and often force a retreat, as the threat of a Backstep attack looms overhead. It can sometimes be hard to properly whiff punish someone doing this as the super armor startup on stamp is relatively quick. Use this sparingly as it leaves you highly vulnerable to attacks. During the script writing of this video, patch 1.08 came out, and in said patch was a small buff to the stamp siblings increased hyper armor for the active parts of stamp. Now this is a very vague statement, but I can confirm the hyper armor on the follow-up has increased drastically. This is especially noticeable when using smaller to medium-sized weapons like great swords. This is a very helpful change, although I think super armor would be a much better decision, as you can still be interrupted fairly easy, as even fist weapons have the poise damage needed to poise break stamp when using the right Ash of War. My long-awaited dream of being able to use stamp as a dedicated anti-air is almost coming to fruition. All it needs is just a minuscule increase in startup speed and stamp could be one of the very few Ashes of War that function as an anti-air. Stamp gets overshadowed by a lot of Ashes. The amount of reward for landing stamp often doesn't outweigh the risks of missing the attack. 
Ashes such as Lion's Claw, Quick Step, and Bloodhound Step are just a few that can exceed Stamp's practicality with much less commitment. That being said, you're going to have to work hard to make Stamp work for your build. On an opposite note, nothing can generate as much dopamine as landing either Stamp's, and that's why I've been using them since launch. This begs the question. Does it feel good to land because it does good damage, or does it feel good to land because it's difficult to land in the first place? <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, thank you all for 6k subscribers. I'm glad you're all enjoying my content, and I hope to continue making videos in the future. Later!